The BC government is pushing for new fracked gas pipelines, as well as dozens of liquefied natural gas export terminals on the west coast, which would introduce thousands of LNG tankers per year. Most of the proposed tanker routes pass through narrow waterways and densely populated areas. Are the hazards of transporting LNG being taken seriously? LNG is fracked gas which is cooled to negative 162 degrees Celsius. When exposed to air, it evaporates extremely rapidly, producing explosive gas vapor. Field tests show that pools of LNG can burn for long periods of time. Flames from large LNG pool fires can reach up to 150 meters in height. There have been multiple explosions of LNG tanker trucks that have caused serious damage. In 2012, an LNG tanker truck exploded in central China, producing a massive fireball that killed five people. Spills from LNG tanker ships have the potential to cause even larger and more devastating explosions. They are considered to be more dangerous than oil tankers. The U.S. Department of Energy commissioned Sandina National Laboratories to assess the potential impacts of LNG tanker accidents. If a tanker ran aground and suffered a containment leak, LNG could pour into the water and freeze it instantly, resulting in a spreading pool of liquid on top of the ice. This liquid would evaporate rapidly, creating a large vapor cloud of gas which can ignite if diluted with oxygen. Anything within a 500 meter radius of the tanker could be killed by freezing or suffocation from the cold gas cloud. If ignited, a large shockwave would be produced as well as a fireball that could burn anything within a 1.6 kilometer radius, causing structural damage and starting forest fires and grass fires. The remaining LNG pool would continue to burn and spread until all of the fuel was gone. Anything within a 3.5 kilometer radius of the blast could also be affected, but less severely. These three hazard zones were defined in the series of reports that were conducted by Sandina National Laboratories on the risks of fires and explosions from LNG tankers. Many of the proposed LNG terminals and tanker routes in BC put nearby communities at risk that are within the three hazard zones. Furthermore, the LNG tankers would cross waters with heavy boat traffic, including frequent ferry routes. Disturbingly, there is a tanker route proposed for the WCC LNG project, which would pass the Prince Rupert waterfront. This route would put emergency responders and critical health infrastructure, as well as the cruise ship and ferry terminals, all within the 1.6 km blast radius, ultimately endangering 13,000 people in the region. More than 60,000 passengers depart the Prince Rupert port on ferries and water taxis each year. The proposed projects together put tens of thousands of people at risk that live in coastal communities. The Society of International Gas Tanker and Terminal Operators, which represents some of the biggest players in the global LNG industry, has outlined important features for the safe siting of LNG terminals and tanker routes. Neither the BC government or the federal government have adopted SIGTO's recommendations, many of which would not be met by the proposed projects in BC. Although the risk of a leak from LNG tankers are low, the accident record for the natural gas industry is far from spotless. There have been a number of industrial accidents in gas plants, such as the explosion at the Pemex gas plant in Renola, Mexico. There have also been multiple natural gas pipeline ruptures and subsequent explosions. A comprehensive list of LNG-related accidents over the past 70 years includes numerous tanker malfunctions, collisions, and catastrophic explosions in gas plants and storage facilities. As more LNG tankers and facilities are introduced in hazardous locations, the likelihood of accidents will only increase. As was evident after the explosion of a fracked oil train in Lac Magantique, which killed 47 people, catastrophic transportation disasters still occur, despite claims of adequate and modern safety precautions. In addition to the devastating environmental and social impacts of expanded fracking operations and the construction of new pipelines and LNG terminals, the risks of processing and transporting volatile LNG needs to be taken seriously. The proposed projects for the West Coast are in more hazardous and seismically active locations than previously developed LNG terminals that follow international standards. First responders and communities near the proposed projects are underinformed and are not prepared for incidents involving LNG tankers and terminals. 
As the government of Canada lack adequate safety standards for the siting of LNG terminals and tanker routes, the decisions of First Nations and coastal communities rejecting LNG developments should be respected and upheld.